G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Monday evening here in Australia, so Monday morning stateside time, and the market is up a little bit. So up 2.3% in total market cap, and we can just see it's a sea of green here at the moment. Now the Bitcoin chart is looking oh so juicy, it just feels like it's getting into this super tight squeeze, and it's going to pop any minute now. Now we're all hoping it's going to be to the upside, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but sometimes the market, well, a lot of the time actually, the market's going to do the complete opposite of what most people are thinking. So I'd say a lot of people who are here, though, are fairly seasoned veterans. And so if it were to go up from here, then it wouldn't be a big surprise to us because we've shaken out most of the, the sort of skeptics and all the rest of it. But there is the possibility that things could go to the downside, and that's going to be pretty sort of scary for new people in the market. But for me, I just think if it goes down, I'm going to be able to buy all these cryptocurrencies at even better prices because the upside then becomes even more uh, extreme if I continue to be able to buy them lower. You know, people say, well, what happens if it trades to zero? You know, not many things trade to zero in all fairness. I'm not saying none of these things will. Crypto is highly speculative. But if they're good projects, been around for a while, got good teams, and I'd say they're going to be here for a while, and they will eventually break their old all-time highs. So we need to keep that in mind, and I want to show you uh, something. So, yeah, we're not buying things at old all-time highs at the moment. Let's have a look. Currently, you can buy Bitcoin at a 46% discount. Most of these coins were at old all-time highs only a few weeks ago, not that long ago at all. So if you're buying Bitcoin at the moment, you're buying it at a 46% discount. Could it go lower? Absolutely. And if it does, I'll just continue to buy more. I don't have any problems with buying things when they're at these kind of discounts. I would be careful with jumping into alts at the moment. I'm not saying don't. I bought some alts today. But I would just be careful and accept that you could get really wrecked if Bitcoin does decide to go to the low side because it will everything else will get hammered by even more. But Bitcoin, you're buying it at nearly 50% off. Ethereum, you are buying it at 50% off. BNB, 51%. ADA, 44%. XRP, 83%. Doge, 70%. I mean, the list just goes on. These are the discounts that you're getting on all of these coins at the moment. So yes, it's scary to buy these things, and particularly if the market goes to the downside, but you just got to then think about the upside. Matic was $2.40. $2.40. You're buying it for $1.05. Yeah, it's going to really suck if it then goes down another 50% to maybe 50 cents, but then the upside becomes even more exponential, and that's what you need to remember. I'm just looking at these coins going, these are fantastic buys. These are great buys. Is this the best time to buy them? I don't know, and in all fairness, no, not at the moment, because they were cheaper only about seven days ago. A lot of these have risen in that time. But again, we're waiting to see what happens. But if you've done your research, you fundamentally believe in, you know, number one, crypto, and then number two, these projects that you're, you know, looking at, they are all on massive discounts at the moment, huge discounts, 80, 70, 50, 60%. The graph, I really like the graph. You can buy it for 74% cheaper than its old all-time high. It's almost lost 100% of its sort of value. Now, it's, that's not quite true. It hasn't lost 100% of its value because I've bought the graph uh, and I'm uh, in profit uh, in most of it, not all of it. I bought some of it uh, and I'm at a loss. This is just 74% down from its old all-time highs. That becomes a little bit hard to explain to new people uh, and how charts work. It hasn't lost 100% of its value. It's still trading at 72 cents, but it's down 70% from its old all-time high. So, I mean, these are just amazing deals at the moment. You know, BitTorrent, if that's what you're into, you can buy it at an 80% discount from its old all-time high, which is was most likely there only a few sort of weeks ago. So that's what I look at when I'm looking at all these coins. I just go, look at the deals that you're getting at the moment. They are absolutely unbelievable. But it is that risk to reward because, yeah, it's going to hurt. 
if you buy Bitcoin at 34,000 and it goes down to 20,000 and it'll really hurt if you bought these coins at today's prices and Bitcoin drops to 20,000. But again, you then just have to start looking at, you know, then what is the upside from here? What is the chance Bitcoin gets down to 20,000 and then maybe goes lower and lower? If you want to be buying more into it when it's sort of going down than when it's on its way up. Because when it's on its way down, your upside is more. When it's already going up, your upside is less. It's totally counterproductive to what our minds would normally tell us, but that's what it takes to become a good investor, is this is when you know things are the best, when they've dropped so much from their old all-time highs. Again, time in the market, is better than timing the market. I don't know if these, this will go lower. They could possibly go lower. And if they do go lower, I just see it as a better buying opportunity than today. What I don't wanna be doing is buying into things that have already pumped a whole lot. I wanna be buying into things that have already dumped a lot. Even if they're going to dump more, I just continue to buy more. Again, that's in projects that you fundamentally believe in have got good teams and will be here in a, you know hopefully another year two five ten years projects that don't have that well unfortunately they're going to probably continue to keep trading uh, downwards and go close to zero so that's the hard part but you know most of the coins in the top 100 uh, in my personal opinion not financial advice are pretty good plays and are probably going to be here particularly those in the top sort of 50 i think you're you know, on a fairly safe bet that they're going to be hanging around for at least another couple of weeks, couple of months, maybe another year or two. Again, really, Bitcoin it would be what I consider the safest bet out of a completely speculative market. But you know, that's changing. The fundamentals are changing. So again, I just look at these discounts and think, yep, I'm onto these. And in all fairness, I bought some altcoins today. What did I buy? Uh, I bought some Voyager today uh, and some Secret Network today. Uh, they were just uh, too good of prices and they looked like they completely flatlined. So I thought now was a good time to buy some. So yeah, that's me. I'm a little bit more risk tolerant. Uh, you know, if you're not as risk tolerant as me, uh, Bitcoin would be a better buy. Again, you're still getting it at a 47% discount. Uh, even if it does drop another 20, 30, 40, 50%, these other altcoins are going to drop by even more. They get wrecked by even more. So Bitcoin would be your best bet. But let's go to the chart and have a look. The Bollinger Bands. Oh, they are so tight at the moment. And again, Bollinger Bands, they whenever there's a, a squeeze, it usually means some volatility is coming. We're just hoping it's going to be to the upside. But we broke out from this downtrending uh, wedge. So again, if we're above this green line, then it's bullish. If we're under it, we're bearish. We've came back and tested it a couple of times. Now we've broken away from it and we're just waiting to see, is this the moment where it's going to get ready to make its big move? And again, we're all hoping to the upside. We're all praying. If it's to the downside, so be it. I told you what I'm doing. I'm just buying more. Also, we have a look at the RSI. This was that downward kind of, you know, bearish trend that we've been seeing for quite some time from all the way back here. But then we saw some bullish divergence. But now look what's happening. They're both getting ready to meet. But again, I thought it was going to break here to the downside. It held. And now you can see it's pretty much, if we drag and stretch this line out, it's sitting right on that line right now. We are at an inflection point. Now, this doesn't have to be exact, just thereabouts. Look at it. It's sitting inside that red line. Will it reject? Because we can see rejected, rejected, rejected 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 is it going to reject and then really sink to that next all-time low or is it going to finally break this and then start to move to the upside we're going to have to wait and see but also the macd we can see we got this bullish crossover then we had a bearish crossover that didn't last for very long and we went back to bullish and it looked like it was going to break bearish there but look what actually happened almost and it's deflected and now they are both starting to head up again things are looking oh so juicy at the moment i just get the feeling like bitcoin is going to make a big move and if it does make a big move to the upside it is going to suck some of the liquidity out of the altcoins everyone's going to pile into bitcoin not everyone but a lot of people will pile into bitcoin but as bitcoin goes up it will also drag all the other coins up and then again, when Bitcoin gets to a point where it's had enough and it needs to take a breather, 
then all of a sudden your altcoins get ready to go on a big mad run. And that's what we're waiting for. All right, only a couple of stories that I found, but really, really interesting ones. So, Venture Arm of Thailand's oldest bank says DeFi will disrupt traditional finance. Even they can see it coming. The writing is on the wall. And I think what he said was, or uh, he or she, I don't know who it was, said, was very interesting. So SCB 10X, Siam Commercial Bank's venture capital arm, said it is preparing for the potential day decentralized finance upends traditional banking. And I don't even think they think it's potential. I think they know it's coming. And they said DeFi possesses everything traditional finance has today and some. When we looked at DeFi, we thought that it we thought that it is possible that one day banks and other financial institutions will be completely disintermediated, basically void and not really required anymore. Now that won't happen anytime soon. That could be a long way away. And I think in the end, people will always want someone to talk to. So banks won't completely disintegrate, but they are going to start adopting or even inventing their own kind of DeFi programs. That is what I think is going to happen. And the banks that we know today, uh, they won't be here in the next 20 years, let alone the next 50 to 100 years. And even the big banks now are coming out and saying, hey, this DeFi thing, we got to get on the back of it. And they are. Uh, you know, we brought that news story about Aave the other day, Aave Pro for institutions to come and get on board and all the rest of it. That will be the future. They are going to onboard that kind of stuff. All right, something for my Australian uh, mates out there, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. So Self Wealth, an Australian securities exchange listed a company and one of the country's largest non-bank online brokers with 95,000 investors is looking to add crypto to its platform. The company is in discussions with cryptocurrency exchanges in a bid to add functionality for trading of the uh, nascent asset class. So basically, they're going to become something similar to sort of Robin Hood. I would say that is what they're kind of aiming for, an Australian version of it. Again, I think this is the future. It's not going to be long before you are going to be able to seamlessly swap between cryptos uh, and stocks and, you know, uh, property, you name it. It's all going to be one in the same. You're going to be able to just jump between the two seamlessly. I'm not saying it's going to happen in the sort of next 12 months or anything like that but I don't think we're too far away. I think it probably takes, you know, it'll be slow going at first like anything and then it'll just start to happen really, really fast. I think that happens in the next decade for sure. I think within the next decade, you will be able to swap between cryptos, uh, you name it, any kind of investment out there and there'll be platforms that you'll be able to do it. Maybe Uniswap, who knows, uh, something new coming, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, even the Australians are getting on board and I'm really, really glad that they're coming up with things like this. I just now really want to see Scott Morrison and the Australian government really get on board with this kind of stuff. I would love for Australia to be at the forefront of crypto uh, blockchain technology. I know we are in some aspects, but I, th I think that's more blockchain technology. I think we are still well behind on the adoption of cryptocurrencies themselves. But in saying that, you know, we're ahead of other countries. But yeah, <sighs> exciting times. All right. More scams, unfortunately. So Chainswap, the Alameda-backed Chainswap, a platform that bridges Ethereum to the Binance Smart Chain, fell victim to another attack last night. So this is the problem with all these new, you know, the hot thing, everything, everyone wants to get out there and invest in this new hot thing that has not been tested. You are literally, like I've said before, when you're investing in cryptos, consider yourself a VC. You're an early adopter. You're investing in projects that have no no history. They haven't yet proved themselves. You're just hoping that you get in and you know one or two of them do well uh, and you make some money. And you know a lot of these platforms that we see just keep coming out. So an attacker exploited a critical vulnerability in Chainswap smart code. The attacker caused a loss of several million dollars, including uh, from Jake Paul backed Web uh, Wilder Web. Sorry. Chainswap suffered another attack last week. The project uh, racked up $800,000 in damages, so nearly a million dollars, and they've had a couple of uh, these happen now. So, yeah, that's why I really don't invest in too many... You know, I'm not into the kind of the ICO things. I did that back in 2017, and not one of the ICOs I got in did well. Every single one of them was a big, fat loss, so I just stay away from it. 
yeah, the biggest gains can come from that, but you also risk a lot of money because a lot of these coins, you know, they just don't last. And short of you getting in early and maybe being able to sell, you know, on opening day when they kind of go crazy, uh, yeah, holding long term, I just don't have a lot of faith in them. All right, last but not least. So Wuri becomes the latest major Korean bank to announce crypto custody service. Hopefully I pronounced that right and I apologize to uh, any Korean viewers uh, if I completely butchered uh, how that uh, pronunciation is done. But again, more banks, they can see what's coming. You know, everyone, not everyone, but people are getting really caught up on this, you know, regulation and what's going to happen, what are they going to do? They're just going to regulate it. They're going to make sure that, you know, they can understand who's, uh, sending money to where, where it's going and all the rest of it. Really KYC, they're just going to make it so they know when somebody's sending money, how much is being sent, where it's being sent to, when it's being sent back and all the rest of it. Outside of that, I just can't imagine there's going to be a government that's going to come out and is going to want to, you know, dismantle this new financial system that obviously works better than the old one. The old one is broken. It's been failing for a long time. And outside of, again, those little walled gardens, you know, the people who are right at the top, they make plenty of money. But everyone after that is losing money. And even actually the big guys are losing money. They can see by keeping their money in cash, it's just, it's going nowhere. It's doing nothing for them. And we have mass, you know, histemic, histemic, I'm sorry, I don't even know how to pronounce that word. Uh, Histemic, I think is the word problems with our entire financial system and it's been getting worse and worse for a long time and it appears like at the moment because we don't know it hasn't been completely stress tested but it appears like crypto is the way out it is a system that just works a lot better not perfect no system is perfect but it works a lot better and i just can't see some country government whatever coming in and just knocking it on the head when they can all because they can all see the writing on the wall where this is going bitcoin continues to grow ethereum continues to grow there's a number of other coins that have been around for a while and they all just continue to grow they aren't dying they aren't going away they just get bigger yes the volatility is extreme at some times but outside of you know the 50 60 70 80 percent drops if you just hold no matter when you've bought generally within about three to four years you're back in profit and from there you know you're looking at x's uh in gains now again none of this is financial advice and that's the good projects that have proved themselves over time not everything's going to do it there's ten thousand different you know cryptos out there at the moment and i don't think you know 90 something percent of those are actually legit and will be around for any length of time Hence why I really focus on the stuff in the top 100. They generally have been around for a while and proved themselves. Not all of them, there's always new ones coming in, but they just look like they have staying power. Outside of the top 100, it really is super speculative compared to just the speculative that you're dealing with uh, within the top 100 and cryptocurrencies in general. All right, look, that's it for me. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Do you get the feeling like something big is coming in the very near future? I think it happens this week. And if it doesn't happen this week, I would be surprised if it lasts past next week before, again, some big move comes. And I'm not saying Bitcoin goes to 100 or Bitcoin simply drops to you know 10,000. Don't get me wrong. If Bitcoin's going down, I could easily see Bitcoin getting down to 24,000 pretty quickly if the move's to the downside. And if the moves to the upside, I think Bitcoin gets up around that sort of $42,000 mark fairly quickly. That is my gut feeling. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Also, do me a favor. If you've enjoyed my content, can you please go down and click on that like and subscribe button and the bell bell icon as well. That way you get notified when I'm bringing out content and I bring out content daily. All right, that's it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.